Hello and welcome. This is Shanna today for Trinity Stamps and I'm super excited to be showcasing some of the new products from Trinity's birthday release this month. The design team and some guests are actually hopping along so be sure to check out the description box below. There's a whole lineup and a chance to win a gift card so you'll want to stay tuned. Today's project features one of the new stamps from the Love Danny collection. I love all of these stamps. They have a really positive, inspirational vibe to them. And this one's no different. It says, you make a difference every day. The stamp is like a three by four stamp that has a coordinating die set. I have actually pre-colored today and did some no line coloring to speed this video along just a little bit. But as you can tell, the die cut cuts the entire perimeter of the sentiment um, with a, just a nice clean edge shape. There is also some bonus dies to die cut some extra hearts that will match the theme of the sentiment. In addition to the Love Danny stamp, I'm also gonna be using the newest die collection called Paper Cut Cuties. No, Paper Cut Characters, but they're really cute. So there are four die sets releasing in this collection, this release. Um, the main die set is the Paper Cut Characters and it includes everything here, including the main body shape, um, and then some accessories for long hair, curly hair, boy hair. These are sandals, shorts, a dress. Then we have the boyish charm add-on to that. Super cute, you get another version of boy hair, a sun hat, tennis shoes and socks, a present for him to hold, and a different variation of an arm shape. In addition to those two, we also have this adorable add-on that is called the Bathing Beauty add-on. It has this fun pool float and a swimsuit with some additional girl hairstyles, including these really cute pigtails. And then here is the pretty princess add-on with a fun party dress, a optional little cover-up, and an additional arm style as well. Okay, let's get started. Today's card is a fun fold card called a double easel. To make it, you'll need a base card that measures four and a quarter by 11 inches, an easel that's four inches by 10 and a quarter, some pattern paper pieces that I have listed on screen, and then an optional inside mat if your card base is on the darker side. So we're gonna go ahead and get to scoring these. The score measurements I also had on those post-its and I'll keep them on screen for reference in case you wanna do some screenshots. So the base card gets scored at five and a half, making a top folding note card. The easel piece is gonna get scored at two and a half inches and then at five inches. I do like to double score most, most of my pieces so you'll see me flip it over. So you wanna burnish these edges really crisp because these actually will fold flat to keep this an A2 size. So you're gonna see once we fold down the top fold note card that that red piece will in fact layer right on top leaving a nice little matte border actually but it's gonna to glue to the front of the card, extending out like an easel. That's where the double easel name comes from. So the pattern piece is attached to the red and they are pre-cut to fit with a matte edge around it. We're gonna go ahead and glue these down and then we will actually attach the red easel piece to the blue note card. I do like to use my bone folder and smooth out, especially when I'm using a wet adhesive it makes sure it gets a nice smooth bond. After I get all three pieces glued, you can see it still, the measurements worked out great. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach it to that blue card. I'm using the Trinity Crafty Glue Friend for pretty much all of my adhesive today. Um, it is a really strong wet adhesive, which is my adhesive of choice most of the time. Um, Bringing over the Love Danny stamp, we are going, I decided I was gonna triple matte this. So I have a piece of the red, the blue, and then another piece of white that are just an eighth an inch bigger than each other to matte that sentiment. 
And then to adhere the sentiment, I'm actually going to pull over some foam tape just to pop it up a little bit to give it its own bit of dimension. So I'll go ahead and center it right there. And that finishes a lot of the card. We're going to move on to the paper cut character. On screen are the pieces I used. Today I'm going to show you two different ways to color these that don't include colored cardstock. I'm kind of showing you here how the hair actually has bangs and layers up. You'll see that again when we piece it all together. So I have pieces on screen to make the body first. So I'm going to be using Copic markers in order to color my skin tone and my hair. So I quickly just kind of figured out where the hair was going to sit on that face so I could actually accurately shadow and shade a little bit. And I'm going to be using some of the E markers. Um, I believe it's E29, 27, 25, and 24. For my skin tone today, I will also link all of my Copic colors down in the description box below for reference because I'm not super great at showing you guys the caps as I color. I did speed this up quite a bit. It is just basic layering of those colors, paying attention to where that hair sits. So speaking of hair, I'm moving on to the black hair is what I'm going for here. I am doing a stippling is what this technique is called. It is intended to make it look curly, not straight. It's really just a ton of different polka dots in a variety of shades of dark, dark grays and black. And then I'm gonna come back in very last with my black again and add more depth with just black dots. It gives better um, texture and makes sure I don't have it looking too gray instead of black. So here I'm gonna go ahead and just put the glue on the back of these pieces and I'm gonna to piece together the face and head. This lets me kind of just set it to the side and work on the rest of the body. So the feet, it looks a little funny. I didn't need a lot of feet colored because we have pants on. So I just colored the ankles essentially, not quite sure how much between the pant and the shoe it was gonna show. And then I'm going to, I went ahead and took the t-shirt and marked out my neckline. So I had the shading okay for that. And then I'm just gonna do some simple shading on the arms, keeping my tones darker on along the bottom of the arm and going lighter towards a light source at the top. And that finishes out our skin tone and hair. Moving over to my second medium of choice, I colored with Distress Oxides. I unfortunately had a filming error and didn't catch it on screen, but I just used a blending tool and one color each for those, those pants and the shirt. So now we're going to assemble. I kept this sped up because I feel like it is very obvious how to assemble these guys, but you just kind of pay attention and make sure nothing's showing behind. So like make sure the shoulder pieces are down past the shirt. Um, I like attaching the pants to the legs first and then adding it to the body. It works, you have a slightly bigger piece to mess with when you're attaching it to the body that way. Um, but overall, these go together so easy and the possibilities are endless. I have a couple bonus cards at the end of this video that you'll see that incorporate some different dies and a couple different stamps. and. I'm in love with these dies, guys. So many possibilities are in my head. The last thing for the assembly is adding the little contrasting sleeves to the scrub shirt. I'm calling it a scrub shirt because this is in fact like a doctor or a nurse in scrubs in my head. I have had this paper for ages in my stash and I knew I wanted to use it with this sentiment. So I'm gonna put it towards the front, but I didn't like the fact that you'd be able to see my coloring. So what I did is I'm gonna glue it down to this white cardstock and I'm gonna cut it out again. This is a little bit of fussy cutting and I did have to clean up some of the smaller edges with an X-Acto knife, but it really didn't take me that long. It does two things. It hides my coloring and all of the piece work on the back and it adds some strength and durability since half of my paper doll won't be adhered down to the card and will be freestanding. 
So I didn't show you all the cutting because it just seemed like extra time for nothing, but you can see on the back here, now we're nice and clean and I can bring it back over. And I decided I was gonna actually slide it to the right of the card so you could see the full word you. I thought that worked really well with the positioning of the doll, but I had free roam over the entire front piece. It could adhere anyways because, or anywhere, because when you fold it down, you still get to see that whole sentiment. And that finishes the front of my card. Now, if you remember, we cut out an, alter, or an optional inside piece, the inside mat for the writing and stuff on the card. I chose to do a little extra embellishing on this and I took those ink blending tools I had colored the shirt and pants with and just without re-inking them, dragged that color up both of the short edges. So on the top and bottom of it, just to tie in the color scheme. As promised, here are those bonus cards that feature some more of the Love Danny stamps and the paper cut characters. One I dressed up as a little army guy, and then of course our bathing beauty and her pool floaty. You are all kinds of wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's project. Be sure to check out the description box below for more information on the hop and all of the products featured in today's video. Until next time, I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.